Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. In the third quarter of 2025, lithography giant ASML achieved net sales of Euro 7.5 billion and new orders of Euro 5.4 billion, with sales to mainland China accounting for 46%. Against the backdrop of tightening U.S. export controls on semiconductor equipment, ASML is facing immense pressure to deliver lithography equipment to Chinese customers. According to ASML's financial report, in the third quarter of 2025, ASML achieved net sales of Euro 7.5 billion, a gross profit margin of 51.6%, and a net profit of Euro 2.1 billion. The company also projects revenue of approximately Euro 32.5 billion in 2025, a year-on-year -year increase of approximately 15%. Despite strict US regulations, ASML has managed to maintain positive year-on-year -year revenue growth, demonstrating its willingness to increase lithography equipment shipments. This, in turn, has led to a situation the U.S. does not want to see. It is understood that the U.S. has frequently pressured ASML in recent years in an effort to restrict the company from supplying cutting-edge semiconductor equipment to Chinese companies. This move directly led to a significant increase in shipment pressure for ASML. To maintain revenue in the Chinese market, ASML urgently delivered a batch of equipment to Chinese companies before January 2025. After 2025, in theory, exports of the NXT, 2050i and NXT, 2100i lithography machines would have been severely restricted, making deliveries to Chinese companies impossible. However, Actual data shows that equipment orders from Chinese companies continue to flow to ASML. SMIC has successfully circumvented Western regulatory barriers with its N plus 1 and N plus 2 generation processes, achieving production of equivalent 7 nanometers chips. At the same time, ASML began to increasingly pressure the United States. ASML CEO Fouquet stated at a Citigroup conference in New York that, over time, the U.S. export controls on China, once imposed in the name of national security, have become more like economic motives. ASML executives are well aware that this U.S. maneuver is not about national security at all, but rather an attempt to stifle the development of China's chip industry and maintain its own monopoly. But what was the result? Xinkai Lai immediately unveiled over a dozen types of semiconductor equipment and also released domestically produced EDA industrial design software, further to embellishing both software and hardware. As for the lithography equipment that everyone is concerned about, I tend to agree that domestic technology breakthroughs have been achieved but not publicly disclosed. This is because manufacturers like ASML of the Netherlands have numerous patents in this field. Releasing these technologies before they reach a certain level of maturity clearly does not meet the needs of the domestic chip foundry market. Currently, thanks to ASML's initial accelerated delivery of DUV lithography equipment to Chinese companies, Chinese companies have accumulated considerable production capacity in the chip foundry sector, effectively mitigating the negative impact of insufficient domestic chip foundry capacity. Coupled with TSMC's shift toward deglobalization, the global chip industry is actually shifting in China's favor. On October 9, 2025, China's Ministry of Commerce issued an announcement imposing export controls on certain rare earth-related items containing Chinese content. The new regulations cover foreign-made rare earth magnets and certain semiconductor materials containing 0.1% or more of Chinese heavy rare earth elements. 
This amounts to a clear rebuttal to the hegemonic measures of the United States and the West. ASML uses rare earth materials in its magnets and batteries and is particularly dependent on rare earths because these devices contain extremely sophisticated lasers, magnets, and other components that utilize rare earth elements. China controls approximately 70% of global rare earth mining, 90% of separation and processing, and 93% of magnet manufacturing. Previously, the Netherlands delivered equipment to Chinese companies under pressure to secure market share and orders. The future resumption of supply of related products may simply be to facilitate the acquisition of rare earths from Chinese companies. ASML China President Shen Bo made it clear, chip manufacturing requires over a thousand steps, each of which requires the world's best companies and talent in that field to ensure execution. Attempting to decouple and disrupt supply chains will ultimately harm the global supply chain, including the United States itself. China now has a growing number of cards in its arsenal, and rare earth control is just one of them. Once domestically produced lithography equipment achieves a breakthrough, whether ASML sells equipment will no longer matter. ASML's CEO clearly understands this day will eventually arrive, which is why he objects to U.S. regulatory measures. Recently, Jensen Huang's remarks about NVIDIA's chip market share in China falling from 95% to 0% also highlight the U.S. chip control policy. This strategy cannot be sustained in the long term. If American companies lose market share in China, they will also suffer losses. While Chinese companies may suffer in the short term due to a lack of suitable chips, they will eventually achieve self-sufficiency in related chip products. At that point, American chip manufacturers, like ASML of the Netherlands, will be unable to regain market share in the Chinese market. Coupled with the shortage of rare earth raw materials, domestic companies will also face difficulties in launching production. This is precisely the situation the United States least wants to see. U.S. chip controls are shooting themselves in the foot, accelerating the development of an independent and self-reliant high-end chip industry chain by Chinese companies. What are your thoughts on this? Feel free to leave a comment and discuss.